We're going to dive into the Word today. So if you have your Bible, come on, where are the holy people at with the Bible in here? We're going to dive into 2 Kings today, and I'm going to speak a word that I think is on time, in season for us right here, right now. And 2 Kings, there's a story happening with Elisha in here. If you've read the Bible before, that Elijah is the prophet, but there's these three kings that were the kings of Israel at the time who were very prideful, and they put themselves and Israel in the desert because of their dumb decisions. Come on, somebody. Anyone thankful that even when we make dumb decisions, God can get us out of that? Come on, somebody. So they were in the desert because they put themselves there. But God loved them so much that he says, well, I'm, I love my people that I'm going to get them out of there. So he sent the prophet Elijah to tell them that I'm going to give you a way to get out of here. I'm going to do a miracle. I'm going to do a miracle where there is no way. So we pick it up in 2 Kings 3. And this is what Elijah, he was talking to the king, says, this is what you need to do. If you want to see this miracle, if you want to see God move, if you want to see healing in your life, if you want to see the things that you've been praying for, if you want to get out of these, this desert situation, Elijah said this, says, this is the eternal's message. Dig trenches throughout this entire valley. Everyone say dig. He goes on to say, this is the eternal's message. You will not see rain fall from the sky or feel the wind blow across your skin. But you will see this valley filled with water because they were in the desert. It was dry and they had no food. They had no water because they put themselves there. And they say, what are we going to do? Maybe you find yourself in a situation here today. What am I going to do? I got myself here. Maybe I made a dumb decision. But I need God to show up. I need God to make a way. And I'm here like the prophet Elijah telling you to dig trenches throughout this valley. And he said this, you and your livestock will have plenty of water to quench your thirst. And that's not all. It is indeed a small thing for the eternal one. He is also going to hand you over to the enemy that's running after you, the Moabites. Then you will attack every fortified, prospered city, chop down every decent tree, plug up every water hole, use the stones to destroy every healthy piece of land along your way. God was telling the people of Israel, you might find yourself in a desert today, but I came to give you water. I came to quench your thirst. But there's a command you have to live by that I'm calling you to do if you want to see a miracle. You have to dig. Would you bow your heads, close your eyes, ready to receive the word. Holy Spirit, speak through us today. Let the people of God know today that they have a role in their miracle, that they have a role in seeing your hand in their life. We thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. If you're ready for the word, give one shout like you went to Taylor Swift last night. Come on. Hallelujah. Give, give, give my, my, your neighbor uh, the cute one um, or the, front, the one you pick first. Give them my title. Say, it's time to dig. Oh, come on. You better say it with some passion, church. It's time to dig. As I was preparing for this message, it reminded me of a story when I was with JC at the beach. We were on the best beaches, which is over there in Sarasota. That is, the, these beaches over here are nasty. Thank God for the West Coast. They have nice sand, you know what I mean? It's nice. So we were over there, and she wanted to search for some treasure. We were pirates. Yo, ho, yo, ho, a pirate's life for me. Y'all don't go to Disney. Okay, we'll pray for you. That's what happens when you have kids. <laughs> So we, were, uh, uh, we saw a guy who had a metal detector, right? So we went over there, and we were hanging out with this guy, and JC started to ask him questions like, hey, what are you doing? What are you searching for? And he was saying, hey, this is the shark tooth capital of the world. It was in Venice. We were over there a little bit south. And he's like, oh, I'm looking for shark teeth. So it's like I'm doing, I'm, I'm going and I'm scanning and I'm seeing and see if they're, you know, good over here. Uh, so he's looking for it and J JC's like, Dad, can we go look for shark teeth? Come on, we got to go look. I want to find one. 
So we were going over there, and, and I got my little uh, shovel. Now, this is kind of better than the one I had. Come on. But I got my, my shovel that we took to the beach, and we're like, okay, let's go. What do we got to do? And the guy was saying, go here. And he kept giving us the roundabout, like it's over here, it's over there. And JC was so excited. So when you're a dad, you do what your daughter tells you to do. Come on, somebody. Even though it's crazy, but at first I'm like, I ain't doing this. I ain't digging a hundred holes to find some shark tooth that we're going to throw back into the ocean. Like, I ain't the shark tooth fairy. What is this? So I'm just like, okay, so he goes right here, and I'm just like, you sure it's here? So I'm trying to negotiate with this guy. Like, you sure it's over here? How do you know? What is your research? Did you Google this? You sure this is the shark tooth capital of the world? And I don't know. JC, let's, let's just go over here and maybe look over here. So I was just trying to say, I don't know if I should do this. I don't know. I don't want, I don't want to dig. I don't want to do the work. So JC looked at me, and she says, Dad, I think you just need to be quiet and start digging. And I'm like, okay. She's like, I really want to find the treasure, and we're not going to find it if you're just talking. If you're just running your mouth, so she said, start digging. So I'm like, okay, baby. So I started digging the hole, digging the hole, digging the holes, digging the holes, digging the holes. We finally found a shark tooth. She was like, look, we found some treasure. Left. But I just uh, remember that time that my, my daughter was speaking life into me. And she was giving me a lesson that I'm trying to teach you today is most of us want miracles, but we're unwilling to dig for those miracles. Most of us want God to move, but we rather negotiate with God than actually do what God has called us to do. We rather say, well, I don't know about this, God. Like, I don't have a good shovel. I don't have a, 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 a I, you don't know who I'm from or where I'm from or what I've done. You don't know, God, so I don't know if I should do this. And we start negotiating like I was with the guy. Like, I don't want to do the work. I just want to see God move, but I don't want to do the work to see God move. And I'm here to encourage us today and challenge us that it's time to dig. That it's time to stop complaining and negotiating and saying, well, what about this? And trying to align your life together. Sometimes, even when you don't see it, you just have to dig. And if you dig long enough, God will provide the miracle. How many believe that God is the God of miracles, that God can do something, that God can look at cancer and say it is gone in the name of Jesus, that God can look at your marriage and say it was broken, but I'm going to make it whole in the name of Jesus, that God can look at you jacked up, hurt, and have identity issues and say, look at you, I will make you whole because I have sent myself. How many believe that God can turn jacked up people into healed people? Give a shout of praise if you believe it. You didn't come to church to sit on your hind parts and sit there and listen to a preacher you came to tell Jesus that he is the answer come on and I don't know about you we're a church that's a digging church so I call you to dig deep today I'm calling you to dig deep and find that grit that you have inside that really wants to see God move do you really want to see God move do you really want to see God fix that situation in your life? Do you really want to see God provide for you financially? Yeah. Well, God bless me, but you don't give. Oh, it's getting real in church. Can we get real in church? Are we awake? I, I just can't tell. Yes. Tiffany, the only person. Thank you. I pay her to sit there. Hallelujah. She's on our staff, so. But sometimes we want God to provide miracles, but we're unwilling to be obedient to what he was saying. This was the people of Israel that made a decision to not listen to God, to not listen to the prophet Elijah, which most of us do, which some of y'all come in here every week and I say something and you don't listen and you go out there and then you call me and you go, well, why is this happening? And I said, well, I, I told you. Are you falling asleep during the message or are you engaged? Come on, somebody. We, the prophet is here speaking to you, telling you this is what you need to do. This is, the, this is how to be obedient to God. This is how God's going to move in your life. But you go, it goes one in here, out the other, and we find ourselves in the desert begging God for a miracle. Aren't you thankful that even when we put ourselves there, God gets us out? That he loves us so much, even when you don't listen, that he's going to get you to listen. Come on. And sometimes you need to be thirsty. Come on, I'm not talking about for your boo. 
I'm talking about physically because some of y'all too thirsty for a human being that you ain't thirsty for God. Come on, somebody. Because you don't hear what I'm saying because you're sitting next to the hottie right now, and all you think about is, oh, my gosh, they're so hot. Because you're thirsty for a human being than actually being healed by the blood of Jesus. Come on. But sometimes we need to be physically deprived, mentally deprived, spiritually deprived in order to know that we need God. It's funny because uh, I love Jane over here. You know, we, we talk a lot about um, just faith, and she was telling me that her son was actually praying for suffering and saying, I want suffering in my life because that's where I feel closest to God. Some of you are praying away suffering, and that's why you feel distant from God. But sometimes we need some trials and some suffering and some deserts in order to feel God and be obedient even when we don't, we don't understand. And God calls us to be faithful when the economy is crashing, to be faithful with our tithe, to be faithful showing up to church when the world is going to hell in a handbasket. But he says, be faithful. Trust me, do you believe that I can do miracles? Because the people of God, they were talking about this. They were they were there, they were, they were like, well, we're in the desert now. And then they're like, well, maybe we should go to the prophet Elijah. And Elijah was there, like, he didn't want to deal with one of the kings because one of the kings was so ungodly that he just cursed, Elijah was cursing him, but God gave him a mission, so he had to do it anyway. So he went over there, and the scripture, this scripture describes the miracle that God provided for Judah eat them in the middle of the dry desert, even when they put themselves there. And these three kings, they, they banded together, and they wanted to mount a surprise on the Moabites. They had a plan, but they had a plan, and they didn't ask God before they did the plan. How many of us in our life want God to move, but we make up our own plans? You're like, well... God, I want you to be in my marriage, but you never asked him when you're supposed to be getting married or maybe if you need to think. Come on, somebody. Because you're dating someone who doesn't even know Jesus. Oh, let's talk about it in church. Come on. All you guests that come to this church, we, we're real here. This is, we're real at this church. So if this is offends you, you can go to the sugar coating, all blueberry, Willy Wonka churches. But come on, this is a church that we're going to call it out in the name of Jesus. Because I want you to grow. I want you to win. I'm tired of pe seeing people wander the desert for 40 days and 40 nights. God wants to do a miracle. God wants to get you out. But you can't make your own plans without addressing the one who establishes your steps. And this is what these kings were doing. They, were, they made a plan and then they came to Elijah this is what it says in 2 Kings 3, 9 through 10. So the king of Israel went to the king of Judah and them, and they marched the roundabout for seven days, the roundabout. See, that's what happens when you do your own thing. You go roundabout. You keep going. Anyone feel like they keep going in circles? That's because you haven't addressed God. They went around about. They had no water for the army, no, none for the animals. They had nothing. And they finally said, alas, the Lord has called us together. And then they were being prideful, thinking that they were the, the anointed ones being called together. Uh, they said, it's our responsibility to go do this. They chose the path, but the path wasn't God's. And they didn't consider that, that there was a desert 80 miles across, and it led them away from water in time of trouble. What a mess they found themselves in. And maybe you're here today and you find yourselves in a mess because you listen to Instagram over God's word. Well, I'm here to encourage you today that even when you're in a mess, that God can get you out of that. You, but it's not time to cry. It's not time to pout. It's not time to complain. It's time to dig. It's not time to, 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 to say, well, why did I put myself here? Why did I get myself here? No, it's time to dig deep. And get a shovel, pick it up, and start saying, if God gave me the, the command to dig the, the ditches in the valley, then I will get out of the valley because I will trust God that he will make a way. And this is what happened is Jehoshaphat, the godly king, recognized this and urged the other kings. They need to go seek God's direction. They need to go seek Elijah. Finally, someone came to their senses. Maybe it's your friend that says, maybe you need to go ask the pastor about your life. 
because you're asking the, you're the wrong friend. Come on, somebody. And then he said this, and then Elijah, he said, he went to the king of Israel, and they said, you know, I don't want to deal with you, but the king of Israel said to him, no, for the Lord has called us together. So Elijah gave him the word, and the word was, go dig ditches in the valley. And it says, they looked at him like crazy, like you, so you're saying, we're in the desert, and you, the desert, you want me to go dig the ditches. So what is that going to do? So they looked at him crazy, and what they seemed like impossible the, where the, where's the water going to come from? God wanted to do a miracle. This is why the message from God today to you is dig trenches throughout this valley. Whatever valley you find yourself in today, it's time to dig. Whatever struggle you find yourself in today, it's time to dig. Whatever financial situation you're, you find yourself in today, it's time to dig. And most people don't see miracles because they're unwilling to pick up a shovel. Most people don't, don't see healing or freedom because they're unwilling to do the work. They come to church and ask the pastor to fix them instead of doing the 70,000 things that I tell you every week. Come on. Get into a group. Go to counseling. Come on, somebody. Go to freedom group. Start giving. Start doing the things that God has called us. I don't sit up here and say it for my health, but I'm telling you right now, we're a church that's going to dig. So we're, if God says we need a building, we're going to keep being faithful. We're going to keep sowing seeds. We're going to pick up our shovel every, every Sunday, and we're going to dig, and we're going to challenge you to dig. Because if you work a little bit hard, there's a miracle on the other side of that. If you trust God's word that says dig these trenches to go after it. If you pick up your shovel and say, I don't feel like it today. I don't feel like showing up church today. I don't feel like giving today. I don't feel like raising my hands. I'm just sitting here in church with my arms folded because I was tired and stayed out all night. I don't feel like it. But we don't live by feelings. We live by faith. And faith says pick up your shovel and rely on the word of the Lord. And say, I'm going to dig even when I don't feel like it. In the midst of their impossible situation, God gave them the command to dig. It's time to dig, people of God. It's not time to complain. It's not time to whine. Woo-hoo! I tell my daughter, there's no whining in this house. I tell my son, whiny boys go night-night. He's, he's four months. I'm going to put you in the bed, bro. We don't whine. It's time to dig. Whatever valley you find yourself in today, it's time to believe in the impossible that God will make a way. Do you believe today? And sometimes the only way you can believe is not sitting there and, and, just, and just hoping for a miracle. It's actually doing the things of God. See, when I was in the, the pandemic before this church started, like, we needed a miracle. And I wanted to sit, ask Jamie, I wanted to sit in my room and complain. I, want to sit, I wanted to call every pastor and say, why, why did you encourage me to do this? I, I just wanted, I was looking for something, looking for someone to blame. And it wasn't until the Holy Spirit says, I cannot do the things in your life. I will not be able to do a miracle if you sit right here and you don't do what I've commanded you to do. In this impossible situation, do you believe that I can birth a church? In this situation where there's no money, there's no people, I can't meet with anyone, do you believe that I can do this? And I, I made a decision that day, sitting in my room, looking at the wall, that I don't want to look at these four walls. I'm going to get out of here, and even if i got to set up a tent in the backyard, because I can't go, I can't go to Starbucks, i got no office. I will set it up in the backyard. I will get on the phone. I will start recording videos to encourage people. I'll do whatever. I will just pick up my shovel and start digging. And if I dig long enough, God will make a way. And three months later, we were recording in a studio in Hialeah, baby. And then six months later, we found our way right here. I didn't have to call Regal. They called me. God made a miracle. We had a church. We started. And then four years later, we've grown our attendance by 29%. We've seen 847 people saved, 88 people baptized. And because we picked up the shovel and kept digging and kept digging and kept digging, miracles happen. Wherever you're at, don't quit. Pick up the shovel. 
Wherever you're at, don't tap out and say, this is hard right now. Pick up the shovel. It's time to dig. And especially in the season we're in as a church, as we're going, in the season we're in as a country, it's not time to sit back. Followers of Jesus can't sit back. We got to pick up the shovel. We got to start digging. And we got to start doing the things God has called us to do. Because nothing is too difficult for our God. Do you believe that today? Nothing is too difficult for our God. And this passage is a reminder that God is omnipotent. He works miracles and nothing is too difficult for him. There is a miracle on the other side of your digging. But I believe most of us want to see the miracle. We have let certain attitudes come into our lives because we want to see it, but we're unwilling to pick up the shovel. The miracle that this church is standing on is people who pick up the shovel. People who say, I'm tired and I worked all week, but I'm going to Sarasota on a Saturday at 6 in the morning and I'm getting back at 8 p.m. at night. Those are some people that are digging. Come on, somebody. I might not feel it, but I faith it. And we got to see some miracles over there. They, they, you know, they were blessed by what happened and the stories that came out. If you just sit in the locker room and you never go get into the game, you'll never see the miracle. If you think, well, God, I want you to provide your Jehovah Jireh, but you keep your money in your pocket. You don't even test God. How can God provide for you if you don't give him something to work with? We want God to work miracles without working our faith. And I'm here to call us higher as a church today. Let's work our faith. Let's pick up the shovel. Let's dig. It's time to dig. Because what the people of Israel saw is they saw a miracle. They defeated the enemy. They had water more than enough to, to feed all the animals and everyone. Because they distrusted the word of the Lord. They stayed faithful and they saw God do the impossible. You can never see God do the impossible if you go from church to church to church to church. You can never see God do the impossible if you go from job to job to job to job. You can never see God do the impossible if you go to city to city to city to city. Sometimes you gotta pick up the shovel in the place that you don't want to pick it up in and dig anyways. I'm just gonna be here. I'm just gonna do it. Because God doesn't do things overnight. Sometimes God does miracles overnight. I believe it. But sometimes it takes some digging. Sometimes we, we have one of our own who's in the hospital right now. Who we've anointed and prayed over that has cancer. But her miracle is not coming through an automatic healing. It's coming through her digging deep every day. And saying, I'm going to put on worship even when I don't feel it. I'm going to praise even when I don't see it. I'm going to go after it even when the doctors give me a bad report. I'm picking up my shovel and I will do it to the day I die because I believe that my God is for me and he will make a way in due season. If I do not give up, I will reap a harvest. Do you believe that today? I want to give you three attitudes that's preventing you and then we're all going to go pick up our shovel. You ready? Is this helping you today? You still awake in the back? All right, good. We'll send the brothers up there. Remember how Paul said, I'm going to send the brothers to check and see if you're giving in the Bible? It actually says that. We sent it. No, I'm just kidding. We're sending the brothers. Two people got it. Thank you for the people who read their Bible. Hallelujah. These are three attitudes because sometimes it's not your ability. It's not God's ability. It's your attitude. You know why you don't experience the things of God? You got a bad attitude. Because you believe, well, God can't do this. <laughs> like, how can God make a way? Like, does he not know my situation? But your attitude is preventing you from picking up the shovel and doing what God has commanded you for you to see the miracle. So here are three attitudes that are preventing us from seeing a miracle, that the attitudes that they had, these kings had in the Bible. Number one is now is not the time to doubt. Now is the time to dig. The attitude is the lack of faith. 
most of us have this attitude of lack of faith that we don't think God can actually do what he says he can do in the Bible. Because we think it's an old book and that it's not relevant. We think that it can't happen to us. We can't. So we lack faith. So we lack stepping out and starting that business. We lack stepping out and starting to give. Lack starting to serve. Starting to be faithful. We, we lack that because we doubt that God won't do it anyways. We don't believe that God can intervene in our lives and perform miracles. Because maybe you haven't seen a miracle. And you see other people seeing miracles. Well, I'm here to say, well, maybe you haven't seen a miracle because you haven't picked up the shovel. Not because God doesn't want to do it in your life. Because you doubt that God won't do it, so you live your whole life here. I don't know. God's called me to speak to my friend about Jesus, but uh, yeah, they're a heathen. There's no way they're coming to know Jesus. And instead of being faithful, you doubt God. And we have people who spend their whole lives this far away from a miracle because they're unwilling to pick up the shovel and actually do some of the hard work and say, you know what? That friend that doesn't know Jesus, I don't care. I'm telling them about Jesus. I'm telling them about Jesus. I'm going to dig, and even if it takes 15 years, come on, somebody. That kid, come on, that kid that's walked away from faith, I'm going to keep praying for him. I'm going to keep going after God for him. I'm going to do these things because when I do these things, I know God will make a way because I trust in God more than I trust my own timing or what I want to see it as. Now is not the time to lack faith and doubt. Now is the time to dig with faith. Faith leads you to action because you believe in the word God has given you. This is why you give time for those you, like, I give my time because I believe God, when I'm here at church serving that God's going to actually do something. Not to get hours for school. Come on, somebody. I'm here because I want to be here because I know God's going to. So I'm going to keep digging even when I don't feel it. I'm going to keep serving even when I don't feel it. I'm going to keep being obedient to God's word even when I don't feel it. It's not time to doubt. It's time to keep sowing. It's time to keep building the kingdom of God. It's time to keep running after what God has called us to do. Doubt causes us to look back instead of trusting God's word. I think the people of God, when they were here, is this helping you today? I got to go in like two minutes. But it, the people of God were looking back going, man, we shouldn't have did that. And most of you don't see a miracle of God because you look at your past. You're looking over here and going, well, I can't pick up that shovel because, uh, man, let me just go try to get back to where I came from. And God says, you're already here now in this desert. You can't go back. You can't change yesterday. But you can pick up a shovel and start digging. You can pick up a shovel and start working on yourself. Come on. You can pick up a shovel and actually see me do miracles. Come on. Does anyone believe this in the name of Jesus? God doesn't cause us to look back. Instead, he calls us to trust his word. He calls us. Jesus said, Luke 9, 62, anyone who puts the hand to the plow and then looks back is not fit for the kingdom of God. Anyone who says that I'm going to do the work of God, that I'm going to step out in faith and pick up the shovel but puts it down and looks back is not fit. You don't give up. Keep the shovel in your hand and keep digging. Now is not the time to look back. Now is not the time to doubt. Now is the time to dig in the name of Jesus. Two more and I'm done. Three people clapping. Thank you. Stop doubting and start digging. Number two, now is not the time to be skeptical. Now is the time to dig. I think there's an attitude in here of cynicism. A cynical attitude dismisses the possibility of anything extraordinary happening, including miracles. It often leads to a skeptical outlook, making it difficult to embrace God's work in the world. Maybe you're in here and you're just, you're a pessimist. I don't want to hang around people that said, you know what, while you're trying to dig, they're like, oh, God ain't going to do anything. Some of y'all need new friends. Come on. Tell your neighbor, like, bye, 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 if you ain't get picking up a shovel. Come on, somebody. But we got to get rid of being skeptical and say, well, I don't know if God can do this. 
I, I don't know. You know, I, I, I hang out with some of these pastor groups, and now I'm in a good pastor group, but I was in a pastor group that they all sat there and say, well, God's not going to grow my church. I don't know. These people are crazy. They're, you know, they're just, they, they say they love Jesus, but they're heathens. I go, so are you, bro. Look at you. But anyways, like I was like, I can't hang out with these people because every one time I come around them and I try to pick up my shovel to advance the kingdom of God, they're over here discouraging me. And sometimes you don't need people that are skeptical because it gets you skeptical. We don't need to be critical in a time where we need to pick up our shovel. We need to shut our mouth. Come on, somebody. And pick up our shovel. We don't need to be on Facebook and saying all of our opinions. We actually need to start digging. You don't see a miracle because you'd rather share your opinion than actually be faithful to God. Maybe we don't need to talk. We need to be quiet like JC said to me. Dad, just shut your mouth, pick up the shovel, start digging so we can find this treasure. Stop being skeptical. Stop thinking God cannot move. You're critiquing everything God is doing. If God asks you to be there, stop questioning him. Believe that he is faithful to get you through it. If God called you there, he will get you through it. He will make a way. God's not going to bring you to a place where he leaves you. Do you believe that today? You have to dig so God can provide the miracle. Stop being skeptical and start believing in what God told you to do in his word. This is why most of y'all don't give financially. Let's just be real, church. Because you actually you don't believe Malachi 3. That says, test the Lord. So you come and complain and you email the church to, to give you money. Come on, somebody. And you ask, you want a handout instead of actually picking up and digging. God doesn't work like that. He's not Santa Claus. Okay? The world's got to twist it. When, when you move, God moves. When you say, I'm going to pick up the shovel, and I'm going to trust and test God with, with being obedient to my tithe and being generous and not spending it on the dolphins, but spending it on the kingdom of God. That's what I do. Sorry. Pray for me. It's a waste of money. <laughs> That's cursed money. <laughs> Blessed money is in the kingdom. Where Haley and Janessa can be saved and set free because you tithe your money and you put it in the kingdom of God so we can create an environment that they can be healed and set free. That's called kingdom blessing. Why don't you put your treasure in the kingdom and not your treasure in the world? Hallelujah. I'm not going to be skeptical. I'm just going to say I'm going to dig. I'm going to be faithful. I'm going to keep sowing seed. And in due season, I'll reap a harvest. Last one is this. Stand your feet. I got to go. It's 1107. Number three, now is not the time to rely on yourself. It's time to dig. The third attitude is self-reliance. Most of us don't pick up the shovel and dig and get to the miracle because we think our plans are better than God's plans. We think our ability and skill is better than God's ability and skill. You ain't that good, homie. You ain't that smart. Maybe us from Hialeah understand that. But some of y'all educated people. It's not our power. I've seen God's hand move because I said I'm going to die to myself and let God make a way. That it's not going to be about me. When it was about me, then I will always fail. But when I get my eyes off myself and get my eyes on God and have an attitude, I can't do nothing without God. I need God. He has to show up. So I'm going to do what he commanded me to do. I'm going to keep digging. I trust you, God. I'm not going to put down the shovel for some blog. I'm not going to put down the shovel because I'm smart. I'm going to pick it up because I know I can't do nothing without what God's told me to do. This is a good word. I'm speaking to myself today. We will miss a miracle in our lives if we rely on our accomplishments and pedigrees. This is the reality. It was funny. I was talking to some of the youth kids. They're telling me about the One Direction guy who passed away. 
And after I started reading about him, he passed away because all of his accomplishments in the world were getting ripped away because the record company told him that they're no longer being a part of what he's doing. So he had no hope. When you rely on yourself, you will have no hope. And this world, it will lead to only no, nothing that emptiness. But when you trust what God says, when you trust what God called you to do, and even when you, you find purpose, when you start picking up, you start to find purpose in what you're picking up because you're not thinking about yourself. You're not trusting in yourself. We need to stop thinking about how we can make a way out and start relying on, on God, the one who can get us out. Amen. Come on, somebody. So this is what I want to leave you with. It's time to dig, people at One Name Church. God wants to prepare your life with ditches that he can fill but God can't fill it if you don't dig how is he supposed to fill it fill you up if you don't dig anything you got to be an empty vessel you got to pick up the shovel you got to provide a space where God can fill you up you got to you got to put the things aside what happened to Noah Noah dug a ditch by building a boat on a dry ground and when it had never rained before he trusted God's voice and what happened his family was spared what happened to the widow? She dug a ditch, and when she made a little cake for the prophet, it came true, said, make this. She made the cake for the prophet. The prophet had, God used her so that person, the prophet, could have uh, food to eat and survive to go tell the word. What happened to Rahab? She dug, dug a ditch, and when she received what she, she received the spies into her home because she was willing to say, I'm available. They can come through my space, and they can go through here to get through the next land. What happened to Moses? He dug a ditch by yielding his rod to God, and he parted the Red Sea. I believe in a God of miracles. Maybe you don't, and you just showed up to church today. But I believe God can heal you. I believe God can set you free. I believe God can make a way. And each one of these people in the Bible, they did natural things, and God showed them to do. And what they did, they were faithful. They said, do these natural things. And he responded by doing supernatural things, what only he can do. We only see the supernatural if we get into the natural and pick up the shovel and start digging and start pushing through and say, I I want the miracle so I'm picking it up today I want the miracle for this city so I'm picking up a shovel I'm digging even when I feel like you only show up for five minutes and you leave and you have an attitude I'm still here digging because I believe God's gonna set you free I believe God's gonna heal you I believe God's gonna do something today is the day to dig in the name of Jesus so if anyone wants to dig, close your eyes, bow your head today. We're going to declare this song because some of y'all need a miracle in here. But if you want to dig today, if you want to partner with us at One Name Church, if you want to see a miracle in your life, why don't you raise your hand today? Say, that's me. I need a miracle. Say, I want a miracle today, and I'm willing to pick up my shovel. If that's you, if you want to pick up your shovel today, just raise your hand. It's not for everyone. Maybe you just want to sit here and just have fun. But if you, want, if you need a miracle, if you're praying for God to make a way, and you want to make a commitment today to pick up your shovel and start digging, just raise your hand right here. Lift it up because I want to give you something to remember this. Our team's going to come around. They're going to give you a little shovel to remind you it's time to dig. They're going to give you something to say no matter what, that we're praying for you, that we're with you, that if you keep digging, you'll see a miracle. If you keep trusting, you'll see a miracle because God is a miracle maker. God is going to make a way, but we got to stay faithful. We got to trust God. Keep your hand lifted. Team's going to come around. And I just want to pray for you. If you grab that, just keep your hand lifted. Come on, team. Move your, move your little hind parts all right now. We're going to come to you. They're going to hand it to you right now. And I just want us, if you got it, just lift it up in the air like this. And we're going to declare a miracle in this space today that we're picking up our shovel. And we're going to believe that God's going to make a way, that he is the way maker, that he is going to provide, that he is going to sustain us through the desert because we're digging, that we're not quitting today, that we're going to keep going today. 
today. We're going to keep moving today. We're going to keep being faithful today. We're going to keep praying today. We're going to keep giving today. We're going to keep serving today. And in due season, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. So lift your shovel in the air. Holy Spirit, I pray right now that everyone who's lifting their hand that needs a miracle, if it's healing in the name of Jesus, I pray that they hold on to this shovel. I pray they hold on to it tight as a reminder to say, I'm digging, God. I'm committed to you, God. I'm trusting you, God. Even when I don't see it, I know that when I dig, it's going to happen. I know I'm going to dig deep and pick up my shovel because you're making a way in the wilderness. So I pray for whatever they're praying for here today, God, that they just hold tight to this shovel and trust in your word and trust in your ways because they will see the miracle. I believe it in my spirit in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Someone give a shout with their shovel in the air like you're ready to dig in the name of Jesus. Come on, our team's going to declare this song, and I want you to hold this shovel up and declare it's time to dig in the name of Jesus.